Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, just want to thank everybody out there that's watching me and I hope you're enjoying my little episode of my cooking shows, Cooking with David. Um, remember, hit that subscribe button, uh, leave comments as well. I hope you are trying those recipes that I'm, I'm cooking up here. And don't forget to uh, hit that notification button as well so every time there's an update you'll be notified when there'll be a new uh, episode coming up. So today I'm going to do my world famous David's chicken soup. <laughs> it's world famous because uh, all my friends and family that eat my or taste my chicken soup really, really love it. And I'm going to do matzo balls, which I'll explain what matzo balls are early, uh, later in the show. But right now we're going to concentrate on the chicken soup. This is a recipe that I guess I got from my mother and she probably got from her mother. And my mother is not the greatest cook. She's kind of like a Betty Crocker kind of gal and she would screw that up as well. So um, so making this soup was actually something that she made it homemade and she was very uh, you know happy about doing it because it didn't come from a box or anything else like that. So, uh, uh, so instead of, and, and a lot of people always say to me you know you should bottle your soup so instead of bottling it I'm gonna make it here and share it with everybody here on YouTube. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to get a big pot of uh, boiling water and I filled it up three quarters high because you don't want to fill it up all the way to the top because when you start putting the chicken and your vegetables and all that stuff into it, what's going to happen, the water is going to overflow. So I do about three quarters of pot. I already started the water boiling and what I normally would do and I highly recommend it is if you're going to do the chicken soup, get a whole chicken and you can plop it in there. You don't have to get a large chicken, like a, a um, less than a two pound, a smaller chicken and stick it in there. But if you've been watching my episodes, I've been doing a lot of filleting of chicken and, and all that stuff. So I have a lot of those parts left over that I didn't want to throw out. So I figured what a good time to make chicken soup. So. Um, again, I'm making the chicken soup and again if I'm type 2 diabetic and anybody that's out there that's watching it knows I'm type 2 diabetic. I lost over 100 pounds and my numbers are in sync where they should be. So this is not going to spike your numbers at all. You don't have to worry about, oh my God, it's going to affect my blood sugar. And even if you're trying to lose weight and you're not diabetic but you're watching me to lose weight, again, this is not going to do anything for your weight. You're not going to gain weight. Sometimes it's really good just to have a good hearty boy of soup on a cold day you're 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 stuck in the house or you just don't want to get out of the house and it's one of those things you can have as a meal uh, for dinner no one says that you have to have a big seven course meal for dinner it's great for lunch uh, and it's always good to have a good hearty bowl of soup sometimes it makes you really feel better especially chicken soup so what I'm gonna do is the chicken that I had left over again I would always do it with a larger size chicken but since I have these chicken pieces left over I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it in the boiling water and I'm gonna get the chicken going bones and all don't worry about it you know don't oh my god he's putting in the bones go ahead and put the chicken in there and don't even worry about it okay so the chicken is now boiling in the water I put it down to a, um, a medium high and right now it's boiling. If you really want the soup to taste even better, I always recommend to use spring water as well, opposed to tap water, uh, depending on your area with the tap water. Some areas have really good tap water, so you can use your tap water. But here in South Florida, it's best to use spring water. Um, as, the, as the chicken is cooking, you'll see some fat content. That fat content is called the schmaltz. Schmaltz is very good because that's the little secret ingredient in the chicken soup it brings out the flavor and the taste. That's basically the chicken fat that's going to come on top of there. So don't freak out. You want the chicken fat because that adds to the taste as well. So I'm going to cook this down. I'm not going to put my vegetables or anything in it because what I'm doing is I'm giving the chicken at least a 15 to 20 minute head start to get going because you don't want to put your vegetables in there now because what happens is they'll just cook down, cook down, cook down and then you'll have mushy, very soft vegetables unless you like it that way but I like my vegetables a little bit more in the crunch and have more of a fresh taste to it. Okay, so 15-20 minutes has, has elapsed at this point. I gave the chicken a head start so this way... Um, it's boiling. Uh, so this way the chicken gets a head start. So now I'm going to put in the vegetables and I'm going to put in the, what my mother would call the secret ingredient. 
Okay. So the vegetables I'm going to put in, I um, prepared um, celery. I already chopped that up. So you're going to put that right in there. Very simple ingredients. Uh, two small onions. Don't chop it up. Just plop it in there. Yes, just plop it in there. And then some carrots. So put the carrots in there. And that's it. Now you want to season it. So this is what my mother would say. It was the secret ingredient. But everybody who makes soup or some kind of soup, there's always a base of the flavor in it. So of course this is chicken flavoring. But since my mother didn't know how to cook, she thought this was the secret ingredient. So when people say, oh, I love your soup. You know, what do you put in it? She would always tell everybody the ingredients for the soup, but she would always leave this out. So it's been a family joke that if you leave this out, your, your chicken soup is going to basically taste like dish water. So you want to put this uh, broth into it. You can use canned broth, you can use powder broth, or you can use bouillon. I'm using a powder broth. And it all depends on how much you want to put in. I'm going to put a good two heaping spoonfuls of the broth. And I'm going to let that cook down. I'm going to put the cover on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to taste it as I, we go along. So if we want to add more, we can add more. If you want to add less, you can add less. But I think that's pretty good for now. I'm going to cover it up. And then we're going to move on to the matzo balls. Okay, so the chicken soup is boiling. It's cooking. All the... Um, ingredients are blending together so we're going to move on to the matzo balls. What are matzo balls? I know it sounds like a funny name, balls, matzo, ha ha ha, but it's basically a Jewish dumpling. Um, the great thing about it is it's filling, it's delicious, and it brings, it, it, it absorbs the flavor of the soup. So that's why it's very good. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice dumpling. Now, for those people who are watching your weight and, of course, diabetic, don't worry about it because a matzo ball um, has no sugar in it and it only has 6 grams of carbs. So it's actually a very low carb and no sugar. So um, some of you folks are wondering if you never had a matzo ball before. Um, in every grocery store, most grocery stores, you can find it. Um, in certain sections, uh, probably in the ethnic, ex ethnic section in your grocery store. Um, in my grocery store, there's several brands. There's Strites, there's Manischewitz, and I kind of use a Strites. Um, not sponsored. <laughs> but this is the one that my family always uses. And we make it from the box. Yes, we use the box. Like I said before, my mother's a Betty Crocker kind of gal, so she does the box version. If you had matzo ball before, you know how to make it from scratch. By all means, make it from scratch. I don't know how to make it from scratch. I know it from the box. If you do want to make it from scratch, then go on another YouTube channel and look up um, matzo balls from scratch. So I'm going to do it by the box. It's very simple. Oh, if they don't have Shrites or, or Manischewitz in the supermarket, Lipton also has its own brand of matzo balls as well. So of course, ask your grocer where the matzo balls are in your, in your grocery store. But most stores carry it. Even if you don't get the ethnic ones, Lipton has them. So what I'm going to show you now is just follow the instructions on the box that comes with the matzo ball mix. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So get out a mixing bowl. In the box it comes two of these packages. So if you want a lot more matzas than matzo balls, then you want to use two packages and double up the, um, the ingredients. But we're only going to use one of them. So what you want to do is you want to take the dry ingredients and open up the packet and put it into your mixing bowl. And then what you have is your dry ingredients. And then what you want to do, the ingredients called for two eggs, two large eggs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in two large eggs. And I'm going to stick that inside my, what that is called is matzo meal. And then a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil and you're going to put that in there as well. That's all you need to do is put in there and then what you're going to do is you're going to take a fork and you're going to mix it all up. 
That's why I don't like doing it from scratch, but this is just so much easier. I mix it up so all the eggs, the oil, gets all combined together into a paste. And that's basically what's going to look like. It's going to be a paste. Now, you're not going to use it right away. What we're going to do is we're going to let it sit out. Um, you don't have to put it in the refrigerator. I just let it sit out on the counter. I just let it sit out on the counter for about 15, 20 minutes. I time it, so I'm going to put the timer on for about 15, 20 minutes. And then when the timer buzzes, then it's ready to go. Okay, so let's wait 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so we let the matzo ball mix uh, sit for 20 minutes, and 20 minutes have elapsed. And if you don't, if you, the matzo balls are an option if you don't want them, um, because the soup on its own is hearty and it's good enough. So if you can't find the matzo balls, then what happens is, or the matzo ball mix, and you don't want to make it by scratch, you can go ahead and eat the soup by itself. I don't recommend this if you're dieting or you're diabetic, but if you want to substitute the matzo ball with noodles, you can do egg noodles or any sort of noodles or ramen noodles or something like that. You can put in there, cook it separately, and then when the noodles are done, you can put it into the soup and have noodles in it. But I don't recommend that if you're diabetic because then it gets more starchy, there's more carbs and all that stuff, so then your blood sugar will spike. So. That's why I recommend either the matzo balls or you don't, but it's an option. So anyway, let's finish up the matzo balls. Okay, so what you want to do is uh, fill up a pot again, three quarters, another pot, uh, separate from the chicken soup. And you can use the regular boiling water, but I like to put a little bit of the broth in there as well, because again, the matzo balls um, sops up, it, it absorbs the flavoring of the broth. So I'm going to put that on the side and let me show you how to do the matzo balls and how to prepare it. Okay, so you can see how pasty it got already. So with dumplings you want to start out uh, small. You want to basically shape them into little um, golf balls or a little bit smaller because they're going to plump up and turn into bigger balls. Um, my older sister, when she first made this, what she did was she made one gigantic ball and it turned into like a soccer ball after it plumped up. So she couldn't imagine what she did wrong, but she didn't read the instructions, obviously. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to shape the matzo balls. So what you want to do is you want to have a little separate bowl of water and you want to just go ahead and uh, with lukewarm water, go ahead and uh, moisten up your hands. Take a little bit of the the matzo ball mix, and what you're going to do is, again, you're just going to shape them, roll them to about that size. It's perfect. You don't have to roll them to perfect dough uh, balls, but if you roll them just like that, you can see it turns into pretty much a nice little size of a ping pong ball or a golf ball maybe a little bit smaller than a golf ball, bigger than a ping pong ball, but around that size. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plop it right into the boiling water. And we're going to do it next again. Just repeat. Take some of the moisten your hands. Go ahead, shape the matzo ball. And again, plop it in the water. And we're going to repeat again. Moisten the hands. Take some of the matzo ball mix, Oops. shape them, and if one's a little bit bigger than the other, that's fine too, and plop them in. Okay, so I finished the matzo balls, I covered the pot, and they're going to cook now in the um, medium heat for about 30 minutes, so just leave that alone. In the meantime, our chicken soup is done. I lowered the oven to setting low and everything is done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to season it up a little bit more. And again, these seasonings are a little optional. I used to not like dill, but for some reason I started putting a little dill into the soup and it actually tastes really good. So I'm going to sprinkle some dill in there. And again, to flavor, you don't have to go crazy with dill, but for some reason the dill gives it a little bit more pop. And then I'm going to put in some, again, this is all optional, a little bit of parsley. A little greenery. And I'm just going to cover it, put it on low, keep it there, and it's all done. And just waiting for the matzo balls. 
Okay, so everything is done. Um, what I did was I took the matzo balls out of the broth that I cooked it in and spilled out that broth. And I just left with the matzo balls. So you can see how they puffed up. And they're finished. And the soup is also finished as well. And then what I did was I took the chicken out of the soup because it had the bones and I deboned everything and I put the chicken back in there. So what happens if I mix it up, you'll see there's chunks of chicken in there. So it's a nice hearty chicken soup. So let's go ahead and let's present it. So I'm going to take a matzo ball. I'm going to put it in the plate and I'm going to go ahead and spoon everything out. Ooh, that's hot. And that's it. And that's uh, Grandma's old-fashioned chicken soup with matzo balls in it. So anyway, try the recipe. Leave uh, your comments down below. Let me know how you tried it and if you like it or not. Um, and also, don't forget to press that subscribe button and the notification. Leave your comments because I really like to hear your comments and see how I'm doing with this cooking show and these episodes. And I also put in a donation button so you can see I have this elaborate 1980s uh, kitchen with uh, pots and pans from the 1960s that is like 100 years old that was passed down from generation. So if you scroll down, there's a PayPal so you can donate money as well if you like. Um, if not, just... Uh, Hit that subscribe button, and I hope you enjoy it. It's so delicious.